Bastard Munchen is one of the best, if not the best, team in the Neo Egoist League. But I don't think they've extracted all the performance they could cause of player to player rivalries like Isagi versus Kaiser. Let's talk about the true potential of the players in the starting lineup for the match against PXG. Let's start with Gagamaru on goal. Gagamaru has been performing pretty well in the Neo Egoist League so far. He's got a couple of crazy saves on his name as well. This is where his explosive reaction comes in, as Gagamaru can react to the ball quickly and without wasted movement to perform the last second saves on goal. I don't think he could do much that would spark a chemical reaction since he's on goal, but what he could do is just hone in on his instincts and concentration to become a more lethal goalkeeper, especially with the amount of good strikers he has to go up against. On the center-back positions, we've got Birkenstock and Mensa. Quite honestly, I don't care that much about them. You could say that they've been doing their job because they wouldn't be in the starting lineup otherwise, but that's all to say about them. On the right back spot, we've got Hiori. Now I would have preferred if Hiori were closer to Asagi, perhaps in the center attacking midfield spot, but I'm assuming Noah put Ness there because he just has a better number than him for that position. One of the things that PXG has to watch out for is his cool-headed vision. Hiori's vision enables him to envision the best pass to make in any given situation, which is kind of like meta-vision, as we've seen Isagi do similar things. Hiori constantly looks around himself during a game to assess the positions of the players around him, as well as the situation situation on the field. This will enable him to both receive the ball in space and pass the ball into space. Hiori has very good ball control too, as he's able to perform advanced techniques with the ball at his feet. He demonstrates this in his ability to do one-touch passes, releasing the ball in the same instant he receives it. He's also able to perform a trap using the bottom of his foot to receive passes. Hiori is a very talented pass too, being able to accomplish a series of short and long passes even in high-pressure situations. Not only are his passes calm and accurate, but his passes also also take into account every player's position on the field. Hiori is a user of MetaVision too, as it's like he has a four-dimensional perspective of the field. Using his eyes to constantly take in information from his center and peripheral vision, Hiori constantly collects data on every player, every play they make, and their positions on the field as well. Hiori minimizes the time it takes for Isagi to strategize and increases his play speed on the fly, whilst also playing a key role in his awakening. We know that he has said that he would abandon anyone who could match up to his ideals at the end of their match against Ubers. He is probably going to link up with Isagi again, and the way this chemical reaction would be the most effective is if they have complete faith in each other just like they had when they scored the final goal against Ubers. What would greatly help Hiori, however, is if he owns his passing skills, as I'm assuming that he isn't aiming to be a striker anymore, but rather someone who brings birth to the best striker in the world instead. On the left-back spot, we've got Kiora Jin. Kiora is a tricky one because we just haven't seen much of him as Kaneshiro has undoubtedly been hiding his prowess from us. But what I do know is that Kiora has got a lot of options here. Something that stands out to me is the distance he's got to Isagi. Isagi is right wing while Kiora is left back. So how would he link up with Isagi that way? He could potentially link up with Hiori since Kiora might share a similar vision as even Isagi acknowledged that he's a competent player when he begged Noah to put Hiori in instead of him. Another player he could potentially link up with is Reichi. They are near each other and Kiora could potentially use Reichi to get him higher up in the field since his ball retention skills must be one of the best within the team. Or maybe he goes rogue and links up with Ness instead for some reason. He has to be performing really well if he wants to make it into the top 23 though since he has no bid yet. If you're enjoying this video so far, consider subscribing. On the center defensive midfield spot, we've got Reichi Jingo. Reichi was acknowledged by Noah as someone who has high ball retention skills as I've discussed when talking about Kiora. And one of the major factors that lead to him having the ball retention skills is his stamina. Reichi's stamina seems practically limitless as his stamina enables him to continue playing at optimal capacity. Reichi was also able to make pretty good use of protractor mode as he gave Mark Snuffy a hard time. For those of you who don't know what protractor mode is, it's a limited area of a two meter radius half circle. Reichi has to constantly position himself in front of Snuffy inside that radius, and if the ball comes inside that area, he would be free to go for the steal. But the most important part wasn't taking the ball ball away from Snuffy, but rather keeping Snuffy in front of him within that two-meter radius no matter what. He could potentially use this on other lethal playmakers like Charles Chevalier to give the bastard Munchen guys some more breathing room and give Isagi an easier time reading the opponent's plays. On the center attacking midfield spot, we've got Ness. Now Ness is obviously going to link up with Kaiser and help him with his quest to destroy Isagi because leaving the Neo Egoist League. One of the things that stands out is his flexible dribbling. Ness, his dribbling style is 
a mix of his hyper-rational technique and flexible ankles. He uses his flexibility to easily feint the ball or switch directions away from his opponent to perform smooth and efficient plays with no wasted movements. Along with his dribbling, Ness is also a very efficient passer. His passes are always accurate and efficient, which helps Kaiser out a lot. Ness just needs to continue with his passes and playmaking, becoming Kaiser's arms and legs to secure victory with him. On the right wing, we've got Isagi Yoichi. Isagi has shown how much his meta vision has evolved together with his playmaking skills and ability to win one-on-one -on -one S. One of his abilities that stands out is his spatial awareness as he begins to analyze the entire field instinctually, giving him a vast understanding of the game. This includes his opponents and teammates' weapons as well. Based on this understanding, Isagi can make accurate predictions of the game's flow. These things allow him to envision an ideal mid-game and execute efficiently even when faced with strong opponents and an unpredictable field. With Corona and Hiori on his side in this case, Isagi greatly increased his options, which led to him completely destroying the Ubers team. However, he still has some difficulties with executing on the visions he's got himself, hence why he should aim for a physicality boost, which I've explained in a different video. If he manages to do that, he could potentially destroy Shidu Ryusei and Itoshi Rin, since this is one of the advantages they've got over Isagi, because they have their bodies to back it up. On the left wing, we've got Grimm. Grimm just does his thing, I don't really care about him either. He can give great passes, so if he continues, that it will greatly increase their odds of scoring if he does it enough times. On the center forward spots, we've got Kaiser and Kunigami. Let's start off with Kaiser. Kaiser is obviously a next-gen 11, which means he's inherently a good striker. One of the things that stand out is his predator eye, which is the complete opposite of metavision. Instead of expanding his vision, Kaiser drastically narrows it down to score a goal. Kaiser uses predator eye to find the smallest of gaps for a shot course when aiming and shooting his Kaiser impact. His off-the-ball movements are also good as he positions himself where he can always receive a pass, whether in his opponent's or teammate's blind spots. The way he could further maximize himself is through actually being less scared to face tough opponents like we've seen the glimpse of when Chris Prince was teasing him. He did end up doing it though, but there was quite some hesitation. The fact that he likes to prey on the weak makes him weak. His ambitions of becoming the world's best are completely useless if he keeps being a coward, and that has an impact on his potential as a player too. Kunigami is kind of becoming a copycat of Noel Noah at this point. The thing that stands out the most for Kunigami right now in the story is his ambidexterity. After having competed in the wild card, Kunigami can score using both of his feet. I know that he has been underperforming in his match against Ubers, but I've gained hope from what I've seen in Chapter 248 as Jinpachi said that Kunigami was a test subject. He was designed to raise the level of the rest of the unpolished gems in his quest to create the world's best player. So the reason he threw away his ego was to aid Jinpachi with his wishes, as he told him to achieve a blank state of mind. Henri has also acknowledged that Kunigami's numbers are slowly but surely reaching Noah's numbers. Watch this video next where I talk about why Bastard Munchen versus PXG will be so great.